Hey there guys, Erica here from High 49 rc Welcome back to another Traxxas Splash video where I'm building a fully water-cooled Traxxas Splash 4x4 which I'm calling the Splash because it just seems right, you know? So since last episode, I got two new sizes of copper refrigerant tubing so that we can make two new uh, water cooling jackets for the motor so we can try and figure out which size is going to be the best flow rate compromise between the water block on the ESC and the water jacket on the motor. Before we get started on that though, I want to say a quick thank you for all the support on the rock climbing videos because I was definitely going out on a limb with the type of content that that is, but I'm really glad that you guys enjoyed it. I had a ton of fun making the videos, albeit filming up there was a little stressful just with all the moving parts and pieces, but aside from that, I'm really glad that you guys enjoyed it and I had a good time making it, so there might be some more of that in the future. Not a whole lot because it's, it's a lot of work, but... <laughs> Definitely might be another possibility in the future. So, with that, let's uh, start making a couple water jackets and give them a test. Oh yeah, and since last episode, I also picked up a few different sizes of pinions and spurs because our new water jackets are going to be thicker than the old one. So we're definitely going to have to adjust the location of the motor to account for that. Here are my two new water jackets. Um, I'm not going to solder them together this time because that was such a pain last time to try and get them to fit after I soldered it because nothing really stayed where it was supposed to. And honestly, I just like the raw copper look better. So I guess uh, let's head to the bathroom and give these a test. All right, so here we are back in the bathtub. Let's see how the smaller of the two new uh, water jackets works. Okay, let's see here. This one. So this is a lot better. Uh, this side is out of the water block. This side is out of the water jacket. So much better than last time, for sure. Yeah, so as you can see, this is out of the water block. This is out of the water jacket. It's a lot better than it was before. It's not dripping anymore. It's flowing. But uh, let's try the bigger one now. I've got the larger water jacket hooked up now. It should be about four times the amount of flow as our original one. So let's see if it, uh, if this is the ticket. And... That is perfect. So once again, this out of the uh, water block, this out of the water jacket. A little more out of the water block, which is perfectly fine. It's exactly what I was hoping for anyways, because um, that is what we're worried about cooling. But I'm definitely happy with the new amount of flow out of the water jacket here. I could... <sighs> could maybe restrict the water block just a little bit. But honestly, it's pretty good. Someone did mention that there are like water restriction thingamadoos for like fish tanks. Um, so I might look into that if I do need some sort of water restrictor. But at this point, I think our larger water jacket is gonna be the one we use. With that all said and done, seeing as we're back at the bench, I'd say it's about time we do the final routing of all the hoses. Get them going where they need to be going and give it a first test, at least with some water. I don't wanna put coolant in it just yet because it's probably gonna leak and then I'll make a mess. So, water first.
I've got everything hooked up. Um, just to give you a quick rundown, cold coolant from the tank is going into the pump. From the pump, it's getting split between the water block and the water jacket. Um, the output of the water jacket and the water block are being split together here. And then that's going up to the radiator, which is being split and then like split together and split apart again just so that like I have the same amount of flow and so that both radiators are working equally as hard. And then that comes out, splits back together, and the cold coolant goes back into the tank. As you can see also, I was messing around with the chassis cover and everything does fit under it, minus uh, this line, because this is cold coolant, so I want this to be outside of the jacket, or out outside of the chassis cover. Um, this might end up being a shorter video, um, just because I really want to get this done today and uh, like edited for next weekend. But before I go, I think it's fair that we put some water in this and give it a quick test. Because this is like the moment we've all been waiting for type of thing. Okay. And this is just water. It's not nitro fuel, don't worry. It is a nitro container, but uh, it's just it's just water. then? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, because I'm seeing bubbles coming out from the bottom of here. Oh, I just have the pump hooked up backwards. Okay, <laughs> that's an easy fix. Pop that off, pop that off. Put that on there. Okay, let's try this again. Yep, okay. That's my servo. Be quiet. It's flowing, guys. It's actually flowing. And I'm getting flow through the radiator so I can pinch this off and I can hear the uh, pump slow down. <laughs> this is freaking cool. Let me turn this off. I want to just see how much flow we're getting back into the tank. And the answer to that is... Oh, no, 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 no. Um, not bad. All things considered, not bad. Um, I think there could be a few improvements made. But all in all, I think this thing is ready for real coolant, but that's going to be saved for next time because I want to get this done. I've made a mess, <laughs> which needs to be cleaned up. Um, I don't think I've mentioned this in a video yet, but to solve my water outlet on the reservoir problem, I'm thinking, I'm thinking about either welding or machining an aluminum coolant tank and putting three um, eighth inch NPT uh, holes on it so I can have two barb fittings, one for like outlet and one for turn, and then the third one for a pressure gauge, like a zero to 10 PSI pressure gauge. I think that could be pretty cool. I'm gonna think about that, maybe uh, formulate some plans in my head. Ah, also I did not put any thermal compound or thermal paste um, under the water block yet because I don't have enough right now, so I'm not going to bother. I'm going to get some between episodes and just stick that on off camera. Well, guys, the Traxxas Splash 4x4 finally has blood in its veins. Or water, I guess, at this point. We made a lot of progress today. Got everything hooked up. It's very, very exciting to have actual water flowing through everything in this. Um, definitely some, some more smaller refinements can be made, um, especially regarding the coolant reservoir. Well, like I mentioned, potentially aluminum one might be happening. Um, 
not sure yet. I'm gonna have to think on that. So with that, hope you guys have enjoyed. Um, I've been getting a lot of positive support and feedback on this series, which is awesome. So thank you guys so much. I'm really glad that you are enjoying it. Um, with that, please leave a like, hit that subscribe button, comment down below if you are ready for the next episode. Follow me on Instagram at high49 underscore RC. Support me on Patreon if you can. Become a member. That would really help me out. And uh, join the Discord server where pictures of stuff like this is going up before I release the videos. So like, if you want behind the scenes, Discord is a place to go. I'm always posting pictures on there. As, as much as I can. <laughs> so uh, anyway guys, thank you so much again for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.